Hello, everyone. I hope your week has been going well. By the time you hear this and you're seeing this, you would have submitted your video lesson, and that's very exciting. So I'll be watching those and providing feedback. It will take some time in order to uh, evaluate uh, because of all the videos, but be patient with that. So let's go over and see what we have for week 10. So for week 10, uh, we had our vi video lessons were due on Sunday, which I'm sure we're all turned in on time. The first quiz is now underway. Uh, please make sure that you have that finished and uh, you try your best. For this class, for this, uh, this semester, because of, the, of us, uh, the nature of the class of distance learning, I'm assuming you're looking at your books, that you're looking at the class materials when you take the test. I have to assume that or else uh, it's not, well, it's not reality. There is a time limit on the test, so you do need to finish the test before the time limit uh, runs out. So it needs to be done in one sitting. So that's something important, uh, but the test shouldn't take very long. But be careful of your typing and be careful of your spelling. Uh, and so if you can, uh, double check your spelling uh, for the transcribing section from the IPA characters to plain English. Now, something that's going to happen soon in the next week, we're going to have a second lesson. Uh, originally, there for EP1, there's just the video lesson, which is to be done in group, and an in-class lesson, which was also to be a group project. But again, that's not going to happen. So I'm adjusting the project. And so the details will come out sooner, hopefully rather than later. But the uh, lesson is going to be focusing on pronunciation. And I'm going to see how, what adjustments we can make to make it more streamlined for you and uh, make it but still have be a worthwhile practice for you becoming a teacher. And with that, this lecture, we're going to go back to pronunciation, talk about voiced and voiceless a bit more, and we're going to focus on the sounds of L and R, L and R. All right. This lovely picture shows two pictures show the vocal cords that everybody's got these so voiced and voiceless so we can see there we go now we can see uh here what we call there's the trachea and these are the vocal cords and underneath is the larynx or what we call the voice box now <clears throat> If you ever get, remember, if you ever get confused about if a sound is voiced or voiceless, we can put our fingers on our throats around our Adam's apple, this thing. And when you feel the vibration, that is a voiced sound. So for voiced consonants or voiced well, vowels, they're all voiced as well, our vocal cords are uh, folds are closed rather. So when we speak, our vocal cords close so that the air from our lungs presses between them, causing those vibrations. That's where the voicing comes from. So, so sounds like ound, o, e. If you put your fingers on your neck, on the inside of your neck, your throat, you can feel the vibrations. But if we do voiceless, those vocal cords are open, and this allows air to flow freely, and we don't get those vibrations. So again, if it comes up on the test, this it, it's a uh, it's easy to. Not cheat exactly, but easy to figure out if a sound is voiced or voiceless by doing by yourself quietly. So, 
voice consonants use the sound. Your, our throats vibrate when we pronounce them. And don't forget we can put our finger to our throat or in our ear. We feel that vibration. It means it's voiced. So v, vote, v as in vote, or j as in gym, j as in gym, b as in bed, b as in bed, and g as in go, g as in go. However, uh, voiceless consonants don't use these vocal sounds, so p, t, k, sh, f, sh, ch. There's no vibration, the only air comes out. So, example given, this is the same air that would come out if we would blow, blew a birthday candle. So, put our finger to our throat and let's see. P, p, p. No, that doesn't work. T, t, t. No. It seems like k should be voiced because it's a kind of a harder sound, but we actually don't use it. Because if we make it voiced, k, 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 what happens? It becomes g, g, g. It provi- it, it's a different sound. Also, s for s or f, f sh for that. And Those are all voiceless, and we can feel that, feel, literally feel the difference between voiced and voiceless. So, sh, short. But when we get to the ort, the o, that's voice. So, sh is voiceless, or, so the o is voiced, and the r, r is voiced as well. So, short short and church church again with the vowel and r sound those are voiced so we, but it's surrounded by voiceless so ch ch er church and here we have in our happy little chart showing including the vowels a e a o u b d g J, L, M, N, R, V, W, X is an approximate. Y, Z, Z. Voiceless. S, F, K, P, Q, L, K. S, T, Ch, Ch. Those are all voiceless sounds. So let's take a look. These are, this is practice. Uh, I want you to read along and try by yourself. We'll start slow. This helps when we do tongue twisters. Fresh fried fish, fish fresh fried, fried fish fresh fish f- fried fresh. I tried. So we see the fr fr fr. Fresh fried fish, fish fresh fried, fried fish fresh, fish fr- fried fresh. I tried. Go ahead and try. It. Fresh fried, f- fresh. See, I even I messed up. Fresh fried, fresh, fresh, fresh fried, fried fish, fresh fish, fr- fried, 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 fried. This is why they're called tongue twisters. Number two. Let's move on. Frank's peers pranks feared. We see the fr peer prank fear. Frank's peers pranks feared. Frank's peers pranks feared. Frank's peers pranks feared. <clears throat> This number three, this one's quite quite long, but it's got good practice in there. I despise the feel of a fuzzy peach, so I prefer to peel the peach. Please help. Two people can peel it fast. We'll eat it on the porch as folks walk past. So again, we see pa and fa. We see some good practice for us to uh, move our mouths and tongues. So let's go one one more time, a little faster. I despise the feel of a fuzzy peach, so I prefer to peel the peach. Please help. Two people can peel it fast. We'll eat it on the porch as folks walk past. We see. And so there we go. Good. Let's do one more time, a little bit faster. And I hope you are following along. 
I despise the feel of a fuzzy peach, so I prefer to peel the peach. Please help. Two people can peel it fast. We'll eat it on the porch as folks walk past. Nothing too difficult, but it's good practice. Please practice by yourselves and, uh, and, and, and exercise your mouth. And here's a bit of poetry we see to help us practice. Taffy was a Welshman. Taffy was a thief. Taffy came to my house and stole a leg of beef. I went to Taffy's house. Taffy was in bed. I took a leg of beef and bopped him on the head. One more time. Taffy was a Welshman. Taffy was a thief. Taffy came to my house and stole a leg of beef. I went to Taffy's house. Taffy was in bed. I took a leg of beef and bopped him on the head. I think a leg of beef, a leg of a cow, that's, that's pretty heavy. Might, might hurt him. Okay, go ahead and please read out loud to yourself. I want you to pay attention. Which sounds do you have a difficult time saying? Which sounds do you have a harder time saying than not? I need to write a note to myself. And again, got some practice for us? Let's, let's try it out. Number one, it's better to give than to receive. It's better to give than to receive. It's better to give than to receive. It's be better to give than to receive. Now, early in the semester, we talked about stress, word stress, sentence stress, phase, uh, phrasal stress, and intonation. When you speak, when you say, how does it sound? Which way does intonation go? Where does stress play a role? It's better to give than to receive. You'll notice that I reduce the syllable here. So it's better to give than to receive. I put a lot of stress. Be, give. Give is the most important word in the sentence. That's where it gets the most stress and receive. Then to, I don't say than to. I shorten it. I reduce it to then to. It's better to give than to receive. Number two. Betty loves the velvet vest best. Betty loves the velvet vest best. Betty loves the velvet vest best. This one's going to be hard because of the and b sound. Betty loves the velvet vest best. Vest and best. Again, practice is important. Number three. Will you phone before you visit the farm? Will you phone before you visit the farm? Will you phone the, before you visit the farm? And number four. Invasion of Privacy is the new album by Cardi B. Invasion of Privacy is the new album by Cardi B. All right. <clears throat> we see B and V. B and V. Practice from last week, which we discussed. Bobby Vincent Barnes bought a violet-colored van. Then Bobby's brother, Sam, bought a silver-colored tram. Then Bobby brought... Bought the tram from his baby brother, Sam and Bobby Vincent Barnes became a very happy van tram man. Bobby Vincent Barnes bought a violet colored van. Then Bobby's brother, Sam, bought a silver colored tram. Then Bobby bought the tram from his baby brother, Sam, and Bobby Vincent Barnes became a very happy van tram man. How joyful. Let's take a closer look at L and R, L and R. Last week we talked about different consonant pairings. L and R are very can be very difficult for East Asian speakers, for Koreans and uh, Mandarin Chinese speakers and Japanese speakers as well, native speakers, because these sounds are not distinct in those languages. So both L and R, L and R, voiced and they're very similar, but L is alveolar and R is post-alveolar, after alveolar. So we think the tongue goes to a different place when we make each sound. So we say la, 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 with the L, la. Where does your tongue go? Does it go to the front or the back? 
Now, it's not going between the teeth. It's not interdental. But la, remember the alveolar ridge from Professor Park's class? La, the tongue is going up to the front of the mouth. La, la, love, lice, jelly, glass. The tongue is going to the front. But for the r, the r sound, where does your tongue go? R, 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 r. It's going down and back. So you can see we can make very different sounds depending on where our tongue is going. La, l, la, and ra, 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 with a r. So going back and forth, that's a long distance for like the words like r e l l y, really, really is very difficult to move the tongue back and forth. So those are often cheat words where we don't make the full distance. But let's take a look here with rice, rice, the food that we eat, rice, rice. And lice, L-I-C-E, being the small blood-sucking insects that live in our hair, lice, lice, lice. Rice, lice. So the of the syllable, the onset, the first part, r and la are very different are different sounds, but the ice, 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 ice are the same. So only the onset, the first part of the syllables are different. So this is where practice in speaking and making the sounds and being able to hear the different sounds is important. So rice, r, r, rice, and la, la, l, lice. So our tongue is going to the top and coming down again for lice. And this is where I have difficulty with the Korean letter leo because those sounds are more combined in Korean, and I always naturally want to separate them. I want to make different sounds. And so one of the, it's the reverse of the joke about East Asians speaking uh, English is that they always get their L's and R's confused, saying the wrong sound, because they're speaking a combined sound, the Liu sound which is difficult for me to say, but natural for you. That's part of, lang of language. So see, here's the name, Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. So J, J, and E, R, Jerry, the tongue stays down. But jelly, 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 the tongue goes up, goes up to the top and back down. Jelly, Jerry, jelly, Jerry. And you'll hear... Also, in my intonation, for jelly, goes up. My whether I think it's because the tongue's going up. I want to make it the intonation go up. But Jerry, jelly, Jerry, jelly. Lastly, not lastly, thirdly, fry, fry, fry. We have f and i sound, the r fry, fry, and the animal or the verb, fly, fly, fry, fly, fry, fly, fry, fly. This can be very difficult to understand and hear because they're so short words. So the, by themselves, it can be difficult to figure out what the person's talking about just based on the word. But often, we're not going to just say the word. We're going to say a sentence. So this helps out a lot in understanding what people are saying because they're speaking phrases and sentences, not in single words. So if we say on page 52, it has it. The two sentences for uh, fly and fry, we see, I like to fly it, I like to fry it. 
But based on the conversation that you're in, you're going to see what the person's talking about. If they're saying, I like to fry it, it means it's a kind of food of some sort. I'd like to fly it, it'll be some mechanical device, an airplane, a kite of some kind. This is where context clues are so important in understanding what people are talking about and what they're saying. This has helped me out a lot in understanding what students are talking about because of context clues in the sentences and phrases that they're saying. Pronunciation may not be very good, but rarely do we say single words as we get older. As babies, yes, we say single words and that's what we mean. And let's take a look at the last example. Grass, grass, glass, glass. Again, our tongue is important here. If we didn't have our tongue, we couldn't talk like this. So we see the g and g and any of the ass and ass sound. Ass is a word you know. It's also uh, one word, one meaning that I don't think you know is that it's a donkey. It's an animal. And it's a, it's a synonym for body part. Anyways, grass, the tongue stays down, goes back. Grass, grass, and glass, the tongue goes up. Glass, glass. Pause. Okay, for, so for this week, we focused on voiced and voiceless, and we took a look at l and r. And you're taking your quiz. Your video lessons are done. Next week, we're going to talk more about the second lesson. But I hope you have a good week. Thank you and goodbye.